I'm setting up for melting now. You've seen my old plumber's furnace here many times. It's propane powered. And there's my molds. I use a lot of wheel weights and old type lead because it's a hardened lead. It has antimony in it among other things. Still not as hard as I would like, but and it's it's not it's semi machinable. I'm not sure you can even get these anymore. They probably make wheel weights out of plastic now. But uh, these are the sprues left over from other flywheels that I've cast. You've seen that in my videos. So that's going to take a while to heat up, and I'll uh, I'll see you then. Remember that safety Nazis are banned from my videos, so I don't want to hear any bad comments because what I'm doing is hazardous. Everything about it is hazardous. It's, it's hot, it's, uh, the fumes are bad, so do this out in the open, or I have an open garage here right now. The lead fumes will um, certainly kill you because I, I don't expect to live to past 95. I'm 75 now. But wear a face shield, leather gloves, any other apparatus you need, and remember that molten metal cannot come in contact with water because it will instantly cause the water to turn into steam and throw the molten metal uh, in all directions. So keep water away from molten metal, keep children away from this, and uh, wear a face mask and uh, uh, get this approved by your local zoning board. See you back when the metal is molten and that's not very hot it's uh, six or seven hundred degrees something in that neighborhood maybe I should check it with a pyrometer which I, ha I now own one of course you've seen it in the other videos the lead is now molten and I have the tip of the pyrometer in there and it's presently reading 625 degrees Fahrenheit have a look. So I'm going to get it just a little bit hotter because of the thin spokes on the, on the flywheels and I'm going to pour it using this ladle. Hopefully I can get enough in the ladle to fill the mold. There is no pouring lip on this pot. It's just a melting pot. I need to get one that has a pouring lip on it so I can take the whole pot out because there's a loss of heat as you transfer it from one uh, ladle or pot to the next and I don't really want to lose any heat. I think I'll pour the round flask first. It'll be two separate pours and I have just scraped the dross off of the uh, lead. There I go. There was barely enough in that ladle. I knew it would be close, and I hope it's okay. I did see metal come up out of the riser, but not to the full height. Now we'll let it cool. A half hour before I break it open, but I think I'll pour the other one right now. Wow, no extra lead at all. Hope it turns out. And you can see the lead shrinking. I can move this a little closer. And that's the purpose of the riser, of course. Well, it's been a while. Not too much warmth there, but uh, let's have a drum roll, and I hope Herb is watching.
Okay, you know, the sand doesn't come off quite as easily as it does with hot aluminum. So give me just a second off camera to, to clean this up. See what it looks like. I took my wife's uh, toothbrush. By the way, lately she's been using this brass toothbrush because her tartar is so bad. And cleaned uh, most of the sand off here, but it's, it's going to require quite a bit more cleanup. And I'll do that down in the basement when I go down into the shop. This is still warm, but I can handle it. But for now, before we examine this and talk about it more, uh, let me open up the other one. All right, let's open up the eight spoker and quite a bit of heat here because that casting is much more massive. There's a lot more lead in it. That came right out and you know what? And again, I'll clean that a little bit off camera to shorten the video. Be sure and continue to watch my videos. Uh, there are many new things coming up, but uh, just an observation here. I think all of you guys that are into metalworking here have been getting bombarded with emails and snail mails about the combination here of MSC and ENCO. I don't know if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. I, th I think they had an unholy alliance going back quite some time ago, but uh, did anybody ever hear of uh, uh, the Antitrust Act and Monopoly anymore? Anyone understand that at all in our government? I, I don't get it. I guess that MSC catalog wasn't quite thick enough. All right, uh, back to, to this now. Boy, I do get on tangents, don't I? So let's talk about these. I'm going to cut off uh, both the, the gate and the riser here on uh, both castings off camera. A most miserable job sawing or in any way really machining lead. If you've never done it, it uh, it's just so gummy. It's like uh, uh, dealing with, uh, remember when a bazooka bubble gum came in the long, the five cent package was quite long like this and you would break it off into sections. Well working with this is like working with bazooka bubble gum. Let's weigh these things on my Toledo Honest Weight No Springs scale. This came from Harbor Freight. I rather like it actually. Here's the curved one. So in, let's see what do we got there? Pounds it's 1.3. Let's do it in ounces. Uh, there's grams, 614 grams, 21 and a half ounces. Now this other one's going to be significantly heavier. Wow. Uh, 40 ounces, 2.5 pounds, 1160 grams I guess it is. I suppose that's all irrelevant but uh, using a ratio if we wanted to we could figure out how much th this one would weigh. I remember that's the one I did not do. Again these are all made by Herb Blair on a 3D printer. As you may have noticed I'm experimenting with some shorter videos called ADD videos uh, that will compress everything and uh, abridge it and condense it blah 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 for those with shorter attention spans and I've already done a few of those some people seem to like them most people don't they want the long versions but maybe I'll do a short version of this too in other words taking a 30 minute video and uh, hacking it down to two minutes three minutes or something like that whatever I, I can but you can leave comments on that too but it's I haven't just been uh, t taking the same video although I may do it on this one. I, I had been doing a separate video, totally new footage, but perhaps I'll try one here just by taking some of the existing footage, re-editing it and shortening it. So see what you think of that. Okay, let's have a little analysis and uh, 
criticism and, and so on, and praise and so on. You know, uh, by 1968, when I was teaching, I sometimes had the freshman class make a little anvil paperweights, and I would have them something like this one. The, the uh, advanced classes made it uh, with aluminum, cast aluminum, but in the beginning classes, because some of these guys were 13 or 14 years old, I had them use lead. And right away I noticed that the uh, using the same molding sand, that uh, the texture, the finish was so much rougher than it was with aluminum, and I've always deduced that that was uh, due just to the, the mass, the weight of the lead, uh, taking more of an imprint into the sand, but that's just as rough as a cob there. Not that that matters, because that would be painted. Now looking around the rim here, I would file more of this off, and eventually I would have to uh, drill and ream this, put it on an arbor, and I would machine uh, the periphery as well as the edge here, and uh, then I would take it to a vise and uh, knock this out with a half round file, and that would file off real easily. But that's a usable casting, certainly, but it does look rough, it does look crude, but in the final uh, analysis, uh, it, it would look very, uh, very well. And Herb did a nice job with those spokes. That'll all file off. Now let's look at the other one, much heavier. Matter of fact, that is so heavy that it would have to be used on a little bit larger engine. I've made some small engines where the flywheels were heavy enough to where they became the load, and that is not the idea of a flywheel. I don't like the looks of the eight spokes as well as I do a, a five or six or even four spoker. A lot of handwork with a file to be done in there, but again, the lead files very easily, but you need a very coarse one or it will clog the files. They do make special files for that, but I don't have any. You know, who works in lead anymore, let's face it. Sure, and wash your hands good after you do this. Don't pick your nose, don't smoke, and don't uh, clean your teeth, you know, because now my hands are contaminated. Very thick hub. Notice that there is no shrinkage anywhere, and I think that was because of uh, the, uh, the riser here, right in the middle. You may see these on an engine someday that I make. I don't know. I have no plans for it right now. Thank you, Herb, for making these. And uh, the whole purpose of this video was, was to talk about 3D printers and how they have uh, possibly uh, uh, liberated the... Uh, pattern maker, you know, to, from some very complex jobs uh, where it's just laid up in a matter of minutes. However, it's going to put some people out of work, but then again, just about all automation for the last hundred years has displaced workers. So uh, let me have your comments on these. There's the castings. There's the patterns. I took you clear through the whole process. This is a uh, two or three videos and be sure and watch my many many other videos and I have a lot of good ones on foundry work should this type of thing interest you and this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video